was 15, I believe, and I got sick. What I got was PlayStation there. That was like another world I can I can be, you know, that actually saved my life. I was in this in a room with like five other kids there. Actually one of them, you know, couldn't you know speak. But you know, you didn't need any words there, you know, we play together and get excited. And sometimes you don't need words, you know, to communicate, to be friends. That quiet man is, you know, communication between words, and I knew it for a long time ago. The Quiet Man is an incredibly ambitious cinematic experience that is attempting to weave a movie and a game into one experience that seems seamless to the uh, player. It's about a badass guy that's gone through some trauma. He's uh, had a hard life, so he's trying to deal with it. He's trying to piece things together, and he happens to be an amazing fighter. Tonally, you have all the trappings of a, of a good, you know, noir crime kind of thriller. Very cinematic experience with dialogue that you can't hear, done through the perspective of our protagonist, Dane, who is deaf. It's a, a game done with a, a big company, like, you know, Square Enix, and yet it's an independent vibe. I mean, it's really an indie game. It's only like three hours, you know, and it is designed to be, you know, completed in one sitting. It's like watching a movie. Yo! Rock address, dog. No one order no chow. Muevate. When Kensei originally pitched a, a soundless video game, which was the, the very first sort of iteration, this was just such a, a thrilling concept. To go, how can we really pull this off? Can you really do that? And it's obviously evolved to include more sound design, but the, the basic heart of it is still there. So, this is it. Ma. 僕やっぱりそのゲームの音を作ってるあの立場なので、その音がないゲームって果たしてどうするのかなっていうのとあとそれをそのサウンドの僕にどうしてその話をするのかなっていうのが一番最初正直な気持ちでした。Dane's inability to hear first of all forces the player into a completely different state of mind. We're so used to, if anything, sensory overload. Surround sound and I'm listening for our people sneaking up behind me, all the things that I'm used to doing in a game. That's gone. There's still sound design to the game though, which is used in a very, very clever way. When somebody's speaking to Dane, there's these melodies, these like ethereal sounds that come through to let you know he's understanding what's happening. This simple idea, putting myself in the place of a character, who I, I have very little understanding of a world without hearing, because my world is all about hearing. That really drew me into the project. And in my normal kind of production space, I'm used to like layering on tons of sounds and kind of, in many ways it's, it's a way to kind of cover up that you're not quite happy with something. So more layers, more layers, more layers. So actually having this, again, a kind of limitation in the scope of sound, I really enjoyed working in that space. I think the game approaches uh, the players with a unique challenge and it kind of forces you uh, abruptly to know what it feels like to be a person who cannot hear. There are things that he knows that as a player you don't know. There's a level of excitement trying to go into this universe and not understand what people are saying but trying to put, you know, puzzle it together yourself. I think it's also important to keep in mind that the deaf community and the hard of hearing uh, people, uh, you can't just clump one person uh, and, and just stereotype everybody as like that. It's really important to keep in mind that Dane is a character who cannot hear, but uses uh, lip reading, some ASL, and some gang signs to communicate with those who are closest to him. Just because he, he's a person who's lost his hearing doesn't make him a saint, you know? He has uh, issues and, and uh, conflict that he has to deal with himself and, and looking for hope, as we all are. Um, the most challenging aspect for me on this project was uh, the fusion of reality and, and CG. Why do we feel like we need to stick to the CGI thing? You know, that was my question. If the goal is the high quality, photorealistic, you know, CGI, why don't we just shoot it then? You know, what's the difference? あの、あの、CG 
We ended up shooting our live action footage in Sofia, Bulgaria. There's this great studio there. It made it look like in its real New York. I think one of the, the biggest challenges with the effects on this game was the level of fidelity that it had to match up with live action, the lighting, the amount of detail. Part of the process was uh, 3D scanning, so we had digital handheld scanners that we would use to scan props. It also involved a lot of scanning characters from all the different facial expressions and doing VO voice recording and performance capture just to bring those uh, digital doubles to life in the game world. Dane has a lot of anger issues that really come out, certainly during combat. We wanted to have the character have a great combo system, but make it accessible. We wanted it to have a lot of moves, but not necessarily require a lot of memorization. I did a lot of research, because I really love action films like Ong Bak and um, The Raid. Watch those like fighting scenes, that way I can get the best composition. Beat, punch, kick. So not only did we have a combo system, but we had a system for finishing the enemies. We had a system for using uh, the environment on our enemies. We had a system for grabbing our enemies, throwing our enemies, and putting them against the wall and kind of doing what we call a beat down. All of the ways that you can dispatch a, a character in this game, there's no way that you can see all of it in one sitting. You couldn't see it in two, three, or four. Working with Koike-san was an amazing experience. He's obviously a very uh, well-rounded martial artist, and it shows greatly in all the choreography that uh, we worked together to, um, you know, to put into the game. えっと、今回、え、クワイエットマンっていう仕事をいただいた時に、初めはですね、あの、実写部分を、え、作ってくれということでオファーを受けて、そしてそれを受けたんですけれども、そしてその、なんですか、キャラクターのえっと、戦い方だとか、プロデューサーの品川さんといろいろお話ししていく上で、えっと、こんなことやりたい、あんなことやりたいっていうのが実写部分で作っていく上で、部分もあの、後からちょ